Yo, what's up, everybody? Yeah, welcome to Mike Dolce Show. As I get this loaded up here on Instagram, inviting our Instagram family, of course. We don't want to go live without you. And uh, just making sure everybody's here. Don't worry, don't worry. The protein conversation is about to happen. I just got to make sure technology is doing what it's supposed to. And it appears to be doing just that. What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well. How does it sound? Is the microphone better? Let me know in the comments below if the audio sounds good. No more cracking, no more popping. And in fact, this, this did help us to upgrade a little bit. Jeff E., that's right, Belmar in the house. Um, so audio is updated. Do you notice the 4K camera upgrade also? Even the background, where am I right now? Who who knows? Well, we got lots of great stuff coming your way, my friends. And as always, we keep trying to provide you higher level experiences. My job is to add value to your lives. And in return, I simply ask, bang, bang, for a quick thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ding that little bell so you're notified when we do come live with videos like this. We're talking about protein today. I had a question. I did a live Q&A on my Instagram story yesterday where I say, hey, ask me any question. I got a lot of questions about my personal protein intake. What's my favorite form of protein? And also, what is the best type of protein for you to take? Now, when we speak about protein ingestion, their protein comes in a variety of forms. But I want to distill this conversation down into what is best with regards to muscle building while also burning body fat. Now, does protein in and of itself burn body fat? Not necessarily, but I'll expand on that more here in a minute. I appreciate everyone being here. Ryan, what's up, Ryan Kramer? Good to see you, brother. Dolce, double digital, baby. Dolby, Dolby, double digital. There we go. Um, good, good, good. So new microphones, everything's upgraded. Lighting can be tweaked a little bit, but much better than it was previously. I see them neck veins are popping a little bit. We can deal with that. I am a little washed out. Where's my Where's my makeup gal? She's not around here. She won't be here actually. Um, all right. So protein. Now, a few weeks ago, I spoke about spoke on a study uh, from Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. Dr. Schoenfeld is widely regarded as one of the um, brightest lights in the world of exercise and fitness related scientific research. Everyone knows Dr. Buzz Schoenfeld and the quality of his work is, is top notch. And in many ways, he has set the standard for the industry to follow. Now, he had a study, one of many studies out there, where he spoke about optimal protein intake with regards to grams as compared to total body weight. And that distills down essentially to be approximately one gram of protein per pound of relatively lean body weight. What does that mean? If you weigh like 200 pounds and you're like 10, 15% body fat, you should take in about 200 grams of protein or so, but I would always hedge a little bit less. It's really anywhere between 0 0.8 and 1.2, which would be ideal, but we can actually scale that as high as 2.0 for short-term high-intensity training loads for certain individuals. Specifically, if you are, this is a little bit of my own data here, approaching a caloric deficit. The lower our calories go, Typically, the higher our protein should be relative to our lean mass. And also, we need to consider what our stated outcome will be. Are we a glycolytic athlete performing uh, maybe soccer or mixed martial arts? Or are we a physique competitor just looking to lean out and stand on stage and not really burn a lot of, of, of glycogen in those moments? Not that it's hard, not hard, not that it's easy to be a physique athlete, but it, it's certainly a different energy uh, utilization. Now, this video, I want to speak about best 
What are the best forms of protein? And you guys know, if you've been following this channel for any period of time, you understand what we say when we say earth grow nutrients, healthful whole, whole foods born of this planet naturally is always where we go, devoid of man's greedy little corporate hands as they synthetically modify our food, not for your general health, but more for their corporate profits. So we want to push much of that away and focus on what we say, if I can walk out in my backyard, if I can pull a fish from the stream, pull an apple off a tree, dig a potato out of the ground, unmolested by man, this is what we are focusing on ideally. S.E.K. with the $100 Super Chat donation. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. The Super Chat donation is live for those of you who care to support this channel. I greatly appreciate that. And S.E.K. and Gronus just says, bicep of truth. Boom. Because the bicep of truth never lies, my friends. You know that that is true. This is the most honest channel in YouTube, and I am the most honest man in fitness. There's a whole list of reasons as to why I can make that claim, but I will not get into that now. Maybe I will during the chat. So anyway, we want to talk about the best forms of protein now that the stream is populated. We go to the earth-grown sources first. What would that be? Those would actually be wild-caught animals, wild-caught well, I say wild caught some of the um, the, the the hunting, fishing um, insta dorks out there, like oh, wild caught dolce, you know, wild caught um, uh, um, you know elk or something. You know what I'm saying? These are animals that are roaming freely in their natural terrain before man comes and hunts them or fishes them, right? Until you end their life, you separate them from existence. So wild caught game meat is ideal. That is the best case scenario where they are reared and fed and, and surviving and thriving in their natural habitat, eating the natural foods that their species is accustomed to. This by far creates the highest quality protein sources and the highest net nutrient capacity in the totality of that, that meat, whatever that might be. Maybe it's elk or bison or venison. Um, you know, we can look at some cows or different, you know, types of cows out there. Of course, we support the certified Piedmontese company um, out there in Nebraska. We understand what they do, how they raise their grass-fed, grass-finished cows. They do an amazing job. We, we, you know, here, one of the reasons I moved to the beach and live in this small little fishing community that I live in is because I I am a fisherman and much of the fish that we get, I actually line catch. I'm doing a lot of surf fishing this time of year, which is literally standing on the beach, standing in the water in my waders and, you know, long casting into the middle of the ocean and seeing what I pull out. This is a great time of year for that ice cold freeze. I'm not quite ice cold yet, but we're down into the twenties or so now. So certainly below freezing. Um, Tuna, you know, we pull tuna out of the ocean right here. I live on the Atlantic Ocean. So flounder, fluke, um, blue claw crab, all these great things. I digress. The best quality of protein by far is animal protein. It, it is. And, I, you know, I'm not mad at the vegans for coming up with their complementary protein sources. I'm not mad at hemp seeds and chia seeds. That certainly has its place. Lord knows we are one, we are one of the first actually of the, the prominent nutrition companies that was suggesting hemp seeds and suggesting chia seeds as protein sources. Now, that will never take the place of animal proteins. Animal proteins are the most bioavailable. Animal proteins are the most robust. Animal proteins contain all essential amino acids. Plant proteins do have their place for sure. The majority of the ingredients I consume are plant-based. For anyone who gets it twisted right now, I am not a carnivore. I don't agree with the carnivore lifestyle. I am not a vegan. I don't agree with the vegan lifestyle. I am an omnivore, as you are most likely an omnivore, as your ancestors and all of our ancestors were omnivores. We are opportunist, opportunistic omnivores, as I like to say, from a long line of opportunistic omnivores. What does that mean? Our 
primal ancestors did not walk past a blueberry bush and turn their nose up at it because it's not keto, right? They ate what was in front of them when it presented itself as an opportunity to procure it. That was it. If the antelope were running, they did their best to take down some antelope. If the fish were, were running, they did their best to catch the fish, right? If, if the um, blueberries and, and, and apples were growing, they did their best to fill up a bushel of blueberries and apples. We come from a long line of opportunistic omnivores. So the notion of the exclusionary restrictive fed dietary practice being the most ideal for our species is wrong. It's wrong. Now, there can be some positive benefit netted from a, a lower carb type of diet, from a, a more plant-based diet. Sure, there's some positive benefits for some people at certain points in their life, but the vast majority of us will yield the highest possible results from long-term health perspective, from the elimination of the manifestation of many sorts of diseases, medical conditions, and ailments. Also, from the positive body composition um, uh, metrics will all be best um, created or cultivated through an omnivoric meal plan, right? So with that, again, best protein sources will come from animal protein. This will come from meat. This will come from elk, it will come from deer, it will come from bison, it will come from salmon, it will come from tuna, it will come from chicken or turkey, even hog, eggs, of course, right? So that world, the animal world, wild caught, mind you, wild caught, because once we get into the conventional animal meats, I might actually start skewing more towards the plant-based, organic plant-based world because of the alteration of the quality of meat as a result of the growth agents that are pumped in to the conventionally harvested animals out there. What does that mean? Look at any sort of chicken farm um, as far as from a, a, a large scale chicken production concept. What happens to these animals, the way that they are fed, um, the way that they are inhumanely treated, no matter what they say, it is inhumane treatment of these animals. And there is a negative net nutrient response to those very harsh living conditions. Also, and most importantly, most likely, we understand the high level stress state, the biochemical uh, um, a containment or contamination of stress hormones on the quality of meat, right? So the more harsh the conditions, the more unnatural the conditions that these animals are raised in, the lower the net nutrient quality of that meat in and of itself, right? So that's why wild caught is way better than organic. Um, organic is way better than conventional and conventional by and large is pretty dang crappy if we understand. And some of the tree huggers out there, um, and the SJWs will scream about, you know, starving people maybe in, in, in Ethiopia or something like that as to why all, um, genetically modified conventionally raised food is a good thing. It's wrong. They're wrong. It's a straw man argument. They're wrong here in the United States, in most first world nations, and really most populations around the world. We do have access to high quality food sources that do not need the synthetic toxic chemicals, nor the harmful growth agents, um, pesticides, hormones, um, and, and you know, other you know, nasty contaminants that are being pumped into our food supply. That in turn, we eventually ingest and there are very clear, I mean, there, there's volumes and volumes and volumes of studies that do show direct relationships to manifestation of disease and or dysfunction in the human physiology as a result of consuming these contaminated food products, right? Which are more done for profit than they are out of the good nature nature of, of you know, feeding a, a starving population. There's a different conversation there altogether. So back to highest net food quality sources. So we spoke about the animal proteins, the wild caught being best, the highly credible organic 
um, processes and companies being kind of that next tier down. We do want to look to our local farmers. I'm a big advocate of, of getting in the car and driving in a 30 minute radius of where you live and looking for some local farmers in your area. You might be surprised at how many local farmers really do adhere to a nearly wild caught processing of the food of the animals that are on their farms, that they do provide a small amount to the local community. This is where we actually get a good amount of our food. We get our local raw honey that way. Uh, we get some of our eggs that way uh, when possible. We get the majority of our fruit that way. We do live right now in New Jersey, which is known as the Garden State, though many of you think New Jersey is, is you know, a five-minute radius of Newark Airport, uh, which is just disgusting industry and, and smokestacks. We actually live down in a quite beautiful part of the world. And in fact, where I live was ranked in the top three greatest counties to live in the United States for what that's worth. Um, but now we speak about some of the plant-based products. Hemp seeds, I would put as the highest quality protein source from the plant world. We talk about hemp seeds all the time. Hemp seeds contain all essential amino acids. Therefore, you do not need additional plant-based sources to create what's known as a complementary protein. What is that? If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you have to eat a multiple um, ingredients in order to achieve all of the essential amino acids. Whereas if you're only eating animal protein, that's all you need. You are actually consuming all essential amino acids. Hemp seeds, chia seeds, they actually contain the essential amino acids acids, thereby making it unnecessary to consume multiple um, um, protein sources, plant-based protein sources. You'll notice in our breakfast bowl, we go pretty heavy on hemp seeds and on chia seeds, also on nuts and or nut butters in our breakfast bowl. Why is that? Because it does add a healthy amino acid component to that more carbohydrate dense meal while also bringing in, bringing in essential fats to that, again, more dense carbohydrate meal. Now, supplementally speaking, we look towards if you are going to supplement and if you don't care animal or plant world, we go to a cold process, cross flow, micro filtered, grass fed whey protein isolate, really with no additional flavorings, no additional fillers and trying to eliminate any sort of additives or stabilization agents. Now here, why is that? We look at a cold process, very important cold process as compared to a high heat pasturation, uh, pasteurization process. The higher the heat, the more the protein itself is denatured and you lose much of the bioavailability of the amino acids itself. So we focus on e the cold processing. We also look for a cross flow microfiltration process. Um, why is that? Because that then ensures the highest level of protein of amino acids, grams of protein is available per, uh, I should say usable amino acids are available per gram of protein actually consumed. When you look at some of the other products out there, let's say like a protein concentrate, if you will, or those that are um, non um, cold process, micro filtered, cross flow micro filtered, I should say. Some of these are actually, uh, they use synthetic chemicals as a part of the processing um, where if you're going to a, a cold process, cross flow micro filtration, this is more expensive. So the brands that do that, they do have a higher um, focus on quality, providing the highest possible quality um, to you, to the consumer. The majority of the products out there certainly do not. Um, it's really more just about maximizing margin for the company. And I can tell immediately if I, when I look at the fact panel, I can tell immediately, does this company actually care about putting out the highest quality protein supplement for their intelligent audience, or are they simply trying to market a low cost to them, high yielding margin product to a consumer? And that is a big point of differentiation to me. 
right? I want to only align myself with companies that are doing their best to, to provide the highest quality product to an informed consumer because the informed consumer will pay a few extra dollars for that highest possible quality product. You look at everyone who shops at Ada Whole Foods or who wears a Lululemon, you can get Lululemon type clothes in a Walmart, in a Target, but the people who buy Lululemon, it's for the higher level blend of fabric, the higher level stitching that, that keeps the fabrics together. Um, you know, same thing, even more so, much more so with what we ingest because there is a, a much deeper impact on our health, of course, but also on our fitness. Um, some of the things that we certainly avoid are the heavily genetically modified foods. We stay away from those. Um, certainly there's no need for it in my opinion, especially here. Um, most of the, the first world nations, there's no need for it. Um, it really, it's more about corporate profit, of course, than it is of helping the individual. We do want again, once again, to distill this down before I answer your questions. You want to stay local. You want to go out in your backyard. You want to really kill it yourself with your hands, with your bow, with your rifle, with your knife. You want to with your um, with your net you know, with your, your, your hook and line, that's really the ideal way. Hopefully you can have someone close to you, do it for you. You can have a trusted company do that for you and provide it back to you. And then the farther you get from your own, from procuring your own food, the, the more hands are now involved in managing your food, keeping the option open for contamination along the way. And that's a big point that we always push to. I am a realist and I always want to share this information from my experience to you guys. I've been around the world, been around the block a few times. I've been in this fitness game for a long, long time. And I know a lot of the big brands. I know a lot of the companies. I've toured many of the facilities. I've been behind the line. I've sat in the board meetings. I've read the fact sheets. And I understand quality and I understand greed. And there's a lot more greed out there than there is quality. And I'm certainly not willing to contaminate my family because corporations are just trying to maximize margin and bottom line. And that's something you need to consider also when you are making your own food choices. Now, let me answer some of these questions here before I jump out. Mr. Russ, what's up? R.E. YOLO. Uh, Ryan, hey, hey. Um, Rob Servin, what's up, Mike? Sounds good and looks really good. Just saying, what's up? Good to see you, Rob. Thank you for being here. Joe Bloggs, you need the camera lower, coach, too much space above your head. I agree with that. I'm not going to fix it up now. We haven't put any of the, the art um, back on the walls yet. That wall will be filled here soon. So I will be surrounded with all sorts of really cool stuff um, coming soon. Um, but I appreciate that. You are absolutely right with that. At least it's not like, like this, I do like these Zoom calls with some people, and and they're they're talking like, "Hey, man!" They're like kind of down here. So at least, uh, you know, we're getting most of the torso in this photo. I appreciate that. Omar, what's up, Coach? Bang, bang, thumbs up. Bang, bang, bang. Quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you have not yet. I appreciate it, guys. Also. Today is maybe the last day of our cyber sale. So save 40% right now at thedolcediet.com for our cyber sale. Use promo code cyber sale, all one word, cyber sale. Save 40% on our number one rated online healthy weight loss membership platform, the four week, three weeks to shredded plan, or the 12 week living lean plus three weeks to shredded plan. Join tens of thousands of amazing humans around the world right now, actively engaged, changing their lives lives. Check that out, guys and gals. But this is kind of the last hurrah of the cyber sale before we go back up to full retail prices. And if you haven't checked out the new website at thedolcediet.com, we just launched the brand new website. It is awesome. Over 1,200 amazing articles. Click on the content link. Start reading some of the articles. You want crockpot recipes? You want amazing post-workout recipes? You want to learn how to tighten up the tummy? Check out the amazing articles we have there. Weight cutting, everything is there. Um, coach, you should switch mics next time. So how is the mic right now? How is the mic right now? How is the mic right now? Um, and the mic isn't formatted where it should be. It's kind of makeshift right now. So I do appreciate that. And let me see something here real quick, if I can. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe that helps just a little bit more. We'll see about that. I appreciate you guys for being here. Remember, we're updating the studio for our, I mean, for you guys, of course, but the Patreon channel is taking off and there's a lot more we're going to be doing for the Patreon channel. Mike Dolce knows on Patreon. If you're not a member there yet, you might want to check it out. Lots of workout content will be there. Lots of behind the scenes will be there. Cooking videos will be there. And uh, lots of, of the war stories behind the scenes of MMA will live there also. Um, what's up, Nick L. Hamad, is it smart to go all beans and legumes, protein during training camp and no meat? No way. I would go the other way. I would go the other way. Um, um, uh, Ari says, coach, can you mix the cross flow isolate way with the breakfast bowl for additional proteins? I wouldn't mix it in the bowl. I would mix it in water, drink it down and eat the bowl separately. I wouldn't mix that into the breakfast bowl itself. It might just be a little, little yuck, a little not fun, not fun. Uh, delicious um bum, bum. mr russ if i hit my goal weight prior to the date i set for myself should i reset goals or joy enjoy an earned meal i would have an earned meal brother have an earned meal plan something take the family out take your girl out go out with the buddies whatever it is have an earned meal celebrate yourself celebrate your hard work and get right back into it the next morning the, the day that we have our earned meal, man, that's one of the hardest training days of the week for sure. That's what the earned meal concept is. But I want you to enjoy that. I want you to really enjoy um, your hard work and your success with that earned meal. Um, Dolce Way release date news will be coming soon, of course, about the Dolce Way Pro. So that will be coming soon. Jen Spence, online teaching, but still sneaking in time to watch Uncle Mike and gain some knowledge. Great to see you, Jen. I appreciate you being here, my friend. Killing the gains, by the way. Um, Russ says, can I get a good hotel room workout routine, please coach also saw that sweet Dolce diet hoodie on the Patreon video. Any chance of them coming back soon? Yes, Russ, they are coming back soon. They are coming back soon. I will keep you informed on that for sure. And you will get the, you're probably a double XL cause you're a tall guy. Um, in workout, I am a huge fan of, of squats and lunges. I mean, squats, lunges, push-ups, V-ups will take you almost everywhere you need to go in the world, right? Bodyweight squats, go, right? Nobody has ever said a bodyweight squat workout was easy. That's really, that's always my go-to. Bodyweight squats, walking lunges, rear lunges, curtsy lunges, push-ups, like multi-hand position push-ups, traditional militaries, going wide, going close, going high, going low, changing those up. You can do a ton of dips, chair dips, um, you know, kind of sitting in between two chairs, uh, works extremely well. Feet up on the bed if you're in the hotel room, really kind of changing the plane of your body. Planks all day, planks holding those that plank position is awesome. Traditional prone planks, also side planks, really train that core. Doing lots of that lower back work, you know, kind of like the old school, like bow and arrows, doing the T's, the Y's, the I's. The W's, you know, really for that mid-back activation, protecting the shoulders. Um, I like to keep my body weight work fast and intense. You know, either I have like, you know, 20 reps, like, you know, banging out. I did a park workout actually on the Insta page. I don't know if I posted it on either. I didn't do it any on these big channels, but check out my Instagram page, the normal timeline. And I did a quick little body weight workout there just while my kids were playing. That's very typical of what you might want to hit. Um at the hotel. Brian Henley, what's up, my man? Hey, Mike, I'm finding it hard to work out because I'm really tired after work. I deliver for Amazon. It's really busy, and I start at 6.30 a.m. I need the Don's help. Brian, that is a tough one. So what I like to do on your days off, plan your days off to be your most strenuous days. So if you work Monday through Friday, Saturday is the day, like Saturday at 11 a.m., that's the day you crush it. Give yourself a little time to sleep in, give yourself the time to grab that meal, but then, man, you crush that workout. So when you have a hard job, we work a lot of people. We work a lot of law enforcement, emergency medical responders, shift workers, people right now, delivery season, right? People who have these harder jobs, put your hard workouts on your off days, whenever that day is. You have more energy, you have more focus, you can train earlier in the day. And then on your training or on your, your work days, man, just do the maintenance stuff. 
All right. Try and get your early morning list if you can. Try and do your 20 minute morning. Bang out your, your 10 minutes of body weight squats, push ups, sit ups, V ups, burpees, and planks. Right. If you just hit that first thing in the morning, this will catapult your gains, Brian. You're already fit. You're already in shape. I'm not mad at you. If I'm, I'm actually, I'm not mad at you. Of course, I'm not proud of you. I'm not mad at you. But I'm saying I'm not mad at anyone who's like, man, I'm crushing the work right now. I'm working from 6 30 to 6 30, 12 hours. It's a hard go. I'm going to say, keep your diet on point. Control the controllables. Keep your diet on point. Keep your hydration sky high. Get that little bit of early morning work in just to kind of get your body, get your blood flow moving. Maintain your strength, your flexibility, your mobility. And on that, that Saturday or Sunday or the Wednesday or whatever it is, that's when you crush your heavy, hard work right? And then as your work schedule slowly kind of gets back to normal, you can start fitting in more traditional workouts. Maybe you, you do your push pull on a Saturday, Sunday, push on Saturday, pull on Sunday. That's probably the way I would split it. And then I would fit like a Wednesday would be like a full body a Tuesday or Wednesday. I would do a full body touch up and these little feeder workouts in the morning. You're going to make gains that way. Of course, not as if you're, you're just living on, on Malibu Beach with nothing to do except train and, and, and eat them awesome food. But you're still going to make gains, my friend. Um, thoughts on canned salmon? I travel with, with the wild-caught canned salmon for sure. I got some in my cabinet in my pantry right now, and it works really well if you, you, you don't have dog food in the house. Um, you know, because we that's my dog eats more canned salmon than, <laughs> than any dog should. I'll tell you that much. And it's always the wild caught. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of that. But wild caught is always best. Like wild caught, line caught. I want it to be I want it to be flopping around on my back deck. That's that's ideal. I'm, you know, I'm always out back cleaning fish. You know, I got a little designated area in my, my backyard because I. Again, I, I just pull it right off, right out of the ocean, walk back up to the house, and I, I can just clean it right there and eat or keep it on ice. And I'll typically clean it right before we cook it. Sarah Kay, what's up, Sarah Kay? Good to see you. Good afternoon to you. Sonia, omnivore diet all the way. F you, Dolce. Going to start, start cooking the chicken stir fry for dinner tonight. Bang, bang, bang. Sarah Kay, 100, 1,000 million, billion percent. Agree. Lazar, coach, is mackerel a good fish? Thanks. It is a good fish. I am a fan of mackerel, actually. It's very oily, but that's why we like it. Um, so, yeah, that's a part of the rotation. Um, Omar says, ooh, where did that go? Dun, dun. Omar, coach, if you had to choose, would you go for something organic or local? Sometimes I see organic produce, but not local and vice versa. Um, local, but not organic. I go with the highest quality standards, right? Because it's USDA, USDA organic doesn't always mean it's the highest quality standard. That really is a slippery slope. But if I know the local farmer doesn't have an organic logo on their food simply because they don't have the hundreds of thousands of dollars it costs to get that logo, but they're still producing under organic philosophies, I'm going to go with them. So quality is everything. Find out the highest pop. Now, if I can get the highest quality local, I will always go local. I will always, always, always support local. Um, Steven, my con great content as usual. Thank you. What are your thoughts on plant-based protein like Vegas Sport? My concern with whey is inflammation. Steven, see, I don't see any inflammation with a cold process, cross-flow, micro-filter, grass-fed whey isolate, devoid of all the flavoring and all the other BS crap that they add to it, right? Most of the whey isolate on the market is sweetened with sucralose and acylfame potassium and then whichever the other one I, that I forget right now. So we would avoid that for for sure. Vega is a good company, but I don't think it's the best option for if you're looking to maximize muscle protein synthesis, of course, if you're looking to maximize um, amino acids per gram of protein consumed, Vega's sports a good brand. I'm not mad at that. And, you know, I'm friendly with, with Brendan Brazier, who I believe started Vega Sport. Now, I think he sold out a long time ago. Good for him. Um, but it's not ideal. Instead, I would just have hemp seeds. Matt says, F you, um, uh, Mike F and Dolce, keep up the good work, brother. Boom. Right back at you, Matt. Can you give a brand name of protein you recommend? I don't have any right now. I don't have any off the top of my head. There's a few that I've tried, but I'm not loyal to any one of those brands. Uh, I fortunately have a whole bunch of my own right now of, of the, you know, kind of the test supply of the Dolce Way Pro. And that's one of the reasons why we have the Dolce Way Pro. We're bringing that to the market is because most of the protein on the market is crap. 
I'm not trying to become a, a, a supplement baron for sure. And I'm actually begrudgingly coming forward with the Dolce Way Pro just to provide the highest quality grass-fed, cross-flow, um, micro-filtered, uh, cold-process whey isolate. That's certainly not available on the market. And any of those that are close to it charge just too much money. I know what the margins are. These companies, my goodness, they are stealing money from you guys. They're stealing money from you guys. Um, Wally V, F U, Dolce, do time constraints are difficult for me to do fasted list in the morning. However, I've been doing fed lists and was wondering how long I should do fed lists for optimal results. Um, six, I mean, 60 minutes is, is kind of the, the, the deal, you know, like 60 minutes, 45 minutes is like the Goldilocks zone. 30 minutes is the minimum. 45 is, is good. 60 minutes is kind of where we cap it. We don't typically go longer than 90. Um, Omar, have you or have you read the, the Omnivore's Dilemma? I have years ago now, years ago. Yeah, it was it was a good book. It was a good read. Not everything, I believe, uh, was accurate like anything. You know, not everything is 100 percent, but it was it's certainly a good read. Uh, Jeff E um, says, when is the Dolce Way release date? Very soon. You will hear about it. Trust me. You guys know me. You will hear about it very soon. Very soon. Sarah K uh, makes sense to me. It's unfortunate. I agree, Sarah K. Right on. Lazar, is peanut butter sandwich complete protein? I mean, technically, yes. Technically, yes. Um, but there's much, much, much better forms of protein than a peanut butter sandwich. Ha, Ryan. Ha, Ryan. No, you're great, brother. Uh, you, you're, you're awesome. It was funny. I had one today. It was, it was literally the guy was like this. I was like, can you fix your phone? He's like, sure. How's that? I was like, you're great, dude. <laughs> no, no, no worries. I can hear you. Um, <laughs> what else? What else? If I wasn't pinching pennies, I would purchase to support. Save that money, Sarah K. Stock that cash, baby. Get it up. Financial freedom. That's what it's at. That's where it's at. Ironhead, everything is working great. Thank you. Mike sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, who do you think is going to win? Errol Spence Jr. versus Danny Garcia. I don't know, man. That's a tougher one for me. Um, I haven't watched I haven't been watching a lot of the boxing lately, um, so I don't know. I think it's a great scrap, though, finally. It's, it's good to see some good fights coming back to boxing. Um, Jesse Lee, coach, love the fire content. Um, oh, that just swung by. Um, can you increase muscular endurance within a short period of time, as in three to four weeks, fighting again on the 19th, ending the undefeated? This undefeated is going to feel – ending this year undefeated is going to feel so good. Absolutely you can um, increase muscular endurance. Of course, sometimes just changing your food and sleep will improve muscular endurance, right? Training, changing the training effect improves muscular endurance. Now, I don't know your exact situation, the way you train, but I do know you're very hard training and you're intelligent, Jesse. Make sure you deload properly so you can bring the best possible package to fight night. A lot of times athletes train too hard, too often, and they don't taper their training into peak week and they enter the fight shot. So that's the one thing I always want athletes is 10 days out is where you should start your taper. Um, Brian Henley, thank you, Mike. You are the best. It is an honor and a pleasure, my friend. Russ just got some spelt flour from Amazon and about to be baking some of the holiday cookies for friends and family. Ooh, from uh, the recipes on the Dolce Diet website. That's right. We got cookie recipes at the Dolce Diet.com website. Click that content tab. All free, my friends, too. All free. Um, are they authorized? Went on three weeks to shredded. That would be an earned meal, Mr. Russ. You know that. How dare you? <laughs> uh, Robert Thompson, Fairlife Whole Milk, unfiltered. Uh, ultra filtered for 50% more protein. Um, I, you know what? I don't know, Robert. I can't comment on it because I don't know the brand. I don't know the product. Um, and it would be ill advised of me to give any commentary. I don't know it, but now that I've read it, I probably will take notice of it. Um, and, uh, take a look. What else? What else? Brian Chael was mentioning your water loading technique. What was the most water you drank in one day? Well, it all depends on the situation and how far you are, but your water loading technique is based upon the individual. You build a baseline as all things. There is no template here. You build a baseline to yourself. If you normally drink one gallon of water per day, that becomes your baseline. And all we say is plus one. What is the plus one? The plus it, one is one unit of measure. To some people, let's say we're, fire, we're working with a 105 pound atom weight. 
Well, her plus one might simply be eight ounces of water. And then we go plus one, plus two, plus three. So we work with individual units of measure, measure based upon their individual baseline. This is the way it works. We have 105 pound fighters or we hear of these 105 pound atom weights following some template program from some idiot wannabe a-hole coach who's having them try and drink three gallons of water per day. The same exact program that they give to a 205 pound, six foot four male light heavyweight fighter who's coming down from 230. More than double the body weight and double the competitive weight of the, the, the younger or the smaller female athlete, but the idiot coaches out there try and have them follow the same template criteria because they don't know any better. So it's a baseline relative to the individual. Maybe you only drink three quarters of a gallon, but your partner at the exact same weight class, the exact same height, the exact same age, maybe they normally drink 1.25 gallons. It's based upon your relative baseline. John Spence, what's up, John? Um, F. U. Dolce, is there a window you need to complete fasted list in the morning before your first meal? Nope, right away. First meal done, usually what I do is I, I, I get done my list, I click on the kettle, I hop in the shower, I get out of the shower, and I, I, I sit down and eat my meal, sometimes while still in the towel. Uh, Lazar, uh, usually standing actually. Um, coach, when I eat, I eat the same meal a couple times a day. When I make beans, I make a full pot of beans and eat two days in a row and other food also. That's a lot of beans. I'm fan with little beans, little, little chickpeas, little pinto beans, black beans, not a whole bunch of beans. Um, Wally V, going to highly consider working with you and your team in the future. Thank you and your team for all the work you do. You are the best in the fitness world. Wally V, I appreciate that. We proudly, proudly um, take that compliment very seriously. We work our tails off over here to provide you the most honest, actionable, evidence-based information. Our job is to over-deliver value to your life and to protect you. Rule number one here is do no harm. We do not do what most of these other ill-advised, ego-hungry um, nutrition teams uh, prescribe to. We are here to help you live a longer, better life and then achieve your short-term goals in the process. And we also understand the value of your transaction with us. And we take that very seriously. We understand that this transaction is, is, is not just financial, but there's an emotional transaction involved here too. And we take that very seriously. Seriously. So whatever you want from us, whatever you need from us, we are always here to help you. And then we stand by whatever we do and we stand in your corner in life. That's how we roll around here. So I appreciate you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Maria, do you agree with Novak Djokovic's plant-based diet for a tennis play? Would you recommend this for tennis players or other athletes? Well, I actually know Novak and I know his team and I know quite a few of the other high-level um, PGA and, and tennis players and I can't say much more about that. <coughs> um, I'm not mad at it. I would look more towards a, a omnivore meal plan, although I think you look at Novak and the level of success that he's had as an individual. But at the same time, I don't think a strictly plant-based diet is ideal. And I know for a fact that it's not. Um, but high, high, a, a high intake of plant-based foods, I do believe is excellent, which is clearly proven. But there should be some sort of supplemental animal products fit into the system. Omar, much thanks for all your time and dedication, Coach. We appreciate you. I appreciate you, Omar. Ebros, just ordered my protein from Pure Label Nutrition and Creatine Monohydrate. Following your guidelines on cold press and grass-fed, thank you. Um, thoughts on those brands? You know what, Ebros? I don't know those brands at all. I've never actually heard of them, but I am saving that message, and uh, I'm going to go and take a look. Um, Doug Brignall advocates against squats, deadlift, bench press, recommends accessory cable machines and dumbbell exercises. I don't know why he would say that. Um, a bench press, I'm not a fan of the bench press unless you're a competitive power lifter because that is a sports specific movement. But the squat, I mean, can I not body weight squat? Is not not lot of Can I not sit in my kitchen chair? Can I not sit in the car when I'm driving? Like, I don't understand why 
I wouldn't be able to perform variants of the squat. Now we understand the dramatic um, neurological impact of loading the spine, as we say, and the dramatic benefit to that. So I would need to learn further about what Doug says. So I don't want to say anything critical, but I just don't understand what the point would be. Um, Brian Henley. Hey, by the way, have you helped me? Um, hey, by the way, you have helped me with the problem because I'm so much healthier. The people I play soccer with, I'm able to run longer, maintain my muscle. The people I play with say it's unfair. Bang. Well, they can simply catch up to you. They can use you as an inspiration to level up their own game. It's not your fault. They're actually criticizing. Are they socialists? By the way, they're criticizing you for working hard, putting the time in to improve yourself, to get better. Like what if you spent 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour a day on your, your ball handling skills? Would they get mad at you that you're actually too good at kicking a ball or dribbling a ball because you practiced more time on that? Well, that doesn't make sense. So I would invite them to do what you're doing or offer them some information on how you're getting better and help them to help themselves. David, where is the real talk? Mike, remember that? Um, hey, coach, I do. <coughs> Don't worry. Real, real talk will be on the Patreon channel, my friend. Um, not here because of all the censors. You've seen what, what's happened on Instagram. Um, hey, coach, do you, you have any plans to do another podcast with Rogan? Not as of this moment. Um, so nothing scheduled as of this moment. Jesse Lee, what type of periodization would you want an NCAA baseball player to be on during, during the season as well as the offseason? Lots of prehab work. Lots of mobilization work. Um, baseball players, depending, pitchers I'm thinking about, they get hurt a lot. So I'm, I'm focused a lot more. We work with a few ball players, a lot more on the prehab work, a lot of core work, a um, lot of mobility work. Um, they get injured a lot because they train with the weights in the off season and nothing in season. They don't even stretch. So there, there's actually, we're trying to find that good, healthy balance. Um, Maria, what are the best supplements and foods for releasing HGH? I'm 16 and want to grow taller, healthful, whole foods right? Getting nine hours of sleep per night, minimizing stress, just eat a lot of the good, healthy, clean foods. I would stay away from all the supplements out there, Maria, and you will be doing great. David says, I need that real talk speech all day, every day, all day. Real talk, baby. Well, here's some real talk. There's four weeks left in, in December, four weeks left in 2020. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to limp your way through the, the rest of the year or are you going to get focused? Are you going to get motivated? Are you going to get out there and kill it? Right? Are you going to finish 2020 in the best shape of your life? Or are you going to turn this thing around and finish proudly with your head held high and say, hey, this year didn't finish start that well, but it finished awesome. Regardless of what's going on, we're all dealing with, with headache and hardship. Every single one of us. So you're not special. None of you are special in that. We're all dealing with headaches and hardship this year, but what are you going to do about it? Is that going to define you or will your actions define you? That's what this is about. What will you do, do now? You have four weeks to prove who you really are. I set a, a challenge on our podcast, The Mike Dolce Show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all the great stuff. Definitely subscribe to The Mike Dolce Show podcast, which is different from what is right here. I put out a challenge to all of our listeners. I'll give to you guys right now. I'm going to give one of you guys $500, $500 cash. Cash, Venmo, PayPal, I don't care. I, I got some, some Aussie dollars. I got some yen. I got some pesos. Well, how do you want the cash? $500 is going to go to one of you, and I'm going to give out some other cool, cool gifts for the best transformation between today, right now, and December 31st. So send me mailbag at the Dolce Diet.com, mailbag at the Dolce Diet.com, or DM me on Instagram. I want your before picture right now so you're on the hook. The way you look right now, and then December 31st, I'm going to pick someone. My goal is for you to lose 10 pounds in the next four weeks. Can you lose 10 pounds in the next four weeks? Excuse me. Yes, you can. The average American is 23 pounds overweight, male and female combined. The average American is 23 pounds overweight. I just want you to lose 10 pounds, to lose half of the weight that you have to lose. Let's hit January 1st at a full sprint. 
The name of today's podcast was Sprinting to the Starting Line. Not sprinting to the finish line. The race is already won at that point. We're sprinting to the starting line. We're going to hit January 1st with momentum. We're going to finish this year at our very best. So can you lose 10 pounds between now and December 31st? You got Christmas parties, you got holidays, you got all the BS, all the excuses to turn you into a lesser version of yourself. You have one reason to focus on becoming your very best. Can you do that? I believe you can. One of you will win $500. I hope it's you. Simply send me your before picture like I'm in. You can give me a little blurb about why you're motivated, something nice, that's cool. But you have to send the before picture right now so then you're logged in. Mailbag at thedolcediet.com or DM me. Either way on Instagram, I'll I'll check it. I'm checking it right now. There's already a good number of people who are in. And I'm going to give some other cool gifts to some people. This is only to motivate you guys. Somebody's going to get 500 bucks. It could definitely be you. Why not you? Can you bust your tail? And all I want is for you to lose. Focus on losing 10 pounds. If you lose six pounds, but you look awesome, you you got some health issue, something bad happened in your life, and you finally turned it back around, tell me that story, you might win. You wind up losing 20 pounds. Awesome. Maybe you win. Who knows? Who knows? I want to help you guys. Whatever I can do to help you guys, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I want to do. I want to help motivate you, inspire you, educate you, cheer for you, challenge you. That's what we do here. I appreciate you guys being here. Anyone who's interested, again, the cyber sale is happening right now. It's the last day to save 40% on our number one rated online weight loss platform at thedolcediet.com, promo code CYBERSALE. Check that out right now. Also, more exclusive behind-the-scenes content is on our Patreon page, Mike Dolce Knows. Check that out if you're into that type of stuff, which is pretty awesome. Um, Follow the Instagram page at The Dolce Diet. I'm going to do a live Q&A there later on today, tonight, um, and again tomorrow. I'm going to answer all those questions, uh, which I got like hundreds of crazy crazy questions. Some questions are really creepy. I'm actually saving all the creepy questions, um, which you, you guys would be like sickened at some of the stuff I get sent for real. I don't know how these ladies deal with it. If I'm getting some of this craziness, Lord knows what some of these gals are getting out there. I feel really bad for them. It's, but some of it's funny. It's all a little disturbing. Um, Anyway, anyway, anyway. So there we go. There we go. Um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, Bernice is in for the cyber sale. Remember, promo code cyber sale. Save 40%. It's the biggest sale of the year right now. And it makes an amazing gift. We have a lot of people gifting the online platform to friends and family. You can set the start date anytime in the future. We can reset the passcode. No problem. Password. You have your own personal dashboard or they will. Our customer service team is, is freaking awesome. Everything you need. Plus, those new members will get exclusive or get invited to our exclusive um, Facebook group, which is reserved only for members of the online community where I'm in there, our coach is in there, our dietitians are in there. And then, you know, our our global community of Dolce Dieters, as we call them, are all in there cheering each other on. It's pretty awesome energy what's going on in there right now. So, guys and gals, you're awesome. I appreciate you all for being here. Bang, bang, bang. Thumbs up to this video if you have have not yet done that. Leave a comment after this video post for the algorithm. I certainly appreciate that. Zach C, how can you win if you're already a jacked up savage? Zach C, you're already a winner, my friend. Look in the way you do, buddy. You are already a winner. I appreciate you. Guys and gals, until next time, boom.